Good to see you, Charlie. Yeah, nice to see you, Mary. Nice to see all of you for our All Things Gardening live here in Norwich, Vermont. And we're going to be seeing a beautiful garden here. Yeah. Yeah. We've been invited to come to uh, Janet's house in Norwich. Mm -hmm. um, and, oh, thanks to Gardener Supply as well. Right. Our sponsor, Vermont. Gardener Supply Company. It's always great yeah. uh, to be sponsored. We appreciate that. And this is a garden we wanted to visit way back in July. Right. But then the flooding happened and a lot of other things. So now here we are in August and the plant palette is all different, but it's still <laughs> beautiful. Yeah. We can't wait to show you just all the different wonderful gardens and flowers that Janet has. exactly and speaking of Janet <laughs> there she is <laughs> yeah, well thank you it's still beautiful it's, even yes. even this time of year even with all the rain and all the floods and of course for viewers at home as you're watching us if you have gardening questions certain plants things of that nature definitely let us know type it in in the box there on YouTube <laughs> and we will interrupt our broadcast as we're going through and we'll answer your questions so Janet nice Nice to see you nice again. Nice to see you. Yeah. Great to see you. Uh, my goal over the years has always been to just have bloom the whole season. So over the years, there's been a blank spot. And it's like, okay, I have to find plants that mm -hmm. go there and will be blooming now. Right, right. And I think we can start right here in this yep. garden. We might as well just dive right into your garden because okay. you have so many of them. <laughs> um, and I guess you can't not notice this big... Flopsy, <laughs> is that the good word for well, it? I what call is it that? Dr. Zeus plant, <laughs> but it's a willow sunflower. A willow sunflower. And because of the leaves, yeah. it makes it a little easier to remember because okay. it does look willowy. Yeah, and that'll have a flower, obviously. It'll have it. little daisies on the top, yeah. which look very bizarre, but, <laughs> but it does bloom and it, it is attractive once it's got all the lovely gold yellow on top. Yes, and is that grown from seed? I mean, or is it a perennial? It's a perennial. It's a perennial, comes yep. back year after year. Every year. Wow. And it's this year because I had an apple, crab apple tree in front of the foam pole that was destroyed during the storm mid-December. Yeah. It came down, took the wires off the house, landed on, oh, tree peonies. <laughs> oh. Uh, and these have never been so tall. Oh. Because they didn't they get, get so much sun. Right. Well, it's going to be quite a show in a, a few I weeks think so, or so. Yes, all the they, they do come up. kind of drape. Yeah. Uh, luckily, the echinaceas finished. I'm mm -hmm. oh, sorry, Achillea, which is going by. So if they're lying on it, it won't matter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what's really great about this property, really unique about this property, is that uh, Janet's been here for 53 years. Yes. Yeah, and 53 years she has planted literally everything that's here everything that's here uh, and the trees the shrubs the perennials everything. probably many iterations of perennials right. <laughs> um, and uh, also she's leaving this is kind of her last hurrah. this is my last hurrah yes yeah uh, my... so we thought it would be a great way to pay tribute to all the great things you've done here in norwich and all these flowers you've grown well my grandfather lived in the house across the meadow so uh -huh. side and gave us this land when we arrived fresh out of college with no money <laughs> and to be in Norwich given land was a real gift so yeah. we didn't have to commute or anything we had jobs and could live right here and build a house uh -huh. and there was nothing here this was a horse meadow essentially Wow uh, my husband moved the barn from Tunbridge piece by piece paid a dollar <laughs> for it uh, you have to make it official yeah <laughs> and I started with a vegetable garden uh-huh because that's what I had done as a kid. I had to weed the vegetable garden, which was not my favorite thing. Yeah. Uh, and then the deer were a problem. So I will see them later. I have what's called enforcers. They're attached to the hose. <laughs> that's they, a kind way of they saying They scare the deer with water. Yeah, and right, right. The woodchucks, unfortunately, didn't care. So within about five years, I'd come home midday to pick beans or raspberries, and the woodchucks would just be mowing Mow the whole place down. down. Yeah. So that made me start a little flower garden and then make another little flower garden, and eventually I connected them, and then I just kept going. Nice. So there was no big master plan. No, per se. I wish there had been. I would now, now that I know what I'm doing, I'd like to <laughs> lift it all up and start over. <laughs> well, you certainly did a pretty good job for not having a master plan and just kind of doing a little of this, a little of that. Well, it made extra work because then I'd have to take things out that were really a mistake. Right, right. Well, let's go over. You have some nice examples okay. of different kinds of gardens you can have. And the one over here, 
here is a shade garden underneath a nice crab apple tree. Yes. <laughs> and as we're going by here, I just wanted to point out this uh, flower on our left. And uh, what is that one? That's a boltonia. A boltonia. And okay. there are plants that you can cut back mid-June to make them fatter and shorter. Mm -hmm. But look it up first, because if you cut something back that doesn't want to be cut back, that's it. It's over, <laughs> and you're very unhappy. <laughs> so that's much shorter than it would be by about two feet. Oh, really? And that wow. lets this... Uh, Rebecca, yeah, kind of uh, be in the see background. the light and yeah, you can see it exactly. before because the first year I had it, this was so tall, the poor thing was back there kind of struggling yeah. for light, and you know wow. you didn't know it was there. So this Boltonia would be two feet taller, exactly under normal circumstances. Yeah. Wow, and maybe more with the rain. I mean, it's hard to tell because everything is just. I mean, it's nice not to have to water, but everything is very tall. Right, yeah. very tall, exactly. So under here, you have some beautiful shade garden plants. And maybe kind of talk to us a little bit about your thinking about the plant selection in here and, and what things have worked and what things maybe weren't the best choices. Um, I think I've got this garden down pretty well in terms of uh, what will and will not grow here. Hostas, if you can get hostas that have yellow or white in them, mm -hmm. it just will make everything look lighter and brighter yeah otherwise they just don't show oh okay. and so it's just green and who you know you don't want a garden that's just green mm -hmm. um the double blood root there's two huge batches here they don't look like anything now but in the spring one of the earliest bloomers they look like little peonies mm. uh, and they're masses of them and the yeah. leaves are tightly wound around the flower and mm -hmm. once they open that's what these big fat leaves are right. now. And I see you popped in a few caladiums. Those are those yes, plants uh, over here that have a little color yeah. on their leaves. And my goal, and of course, was to make a real show, but because of the cooler weather, which I don't mind, and so much rain, they're tropical and they're not making a big show yet because it's just been too cold. Yeah, too cold, too wet for yeah. them. And that's something you have to pull up in the fall if you want to keep them. If you want to keep them, but I have no place to keep them. Oh. I don't have a cellar. Oh, I see. And I don't have a heated garage or uh -huh. anything, so they they can't freeze. I just buy them every year. And last year they were up much faster. Oh, okay. So it's just... It all depends on the year. It's an and, experiment. And getting right. them growing. Yeah. Nice. So, so you also pop in a few annuals just to add a little more color, like this uh, little begonia you have begonia, over here. begonia, right, because I really love the white flowers. It's called Bossa Nova. Uh-huh. And it, uh, the first frost will... Wipe it out. Well, yes, exactly. <laughs> Takes care very of that for you. Yes, yeah, very sensitive. Yeah. 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 This is really a nice way to show the different textures, different colored leaves um, in a, a shade garden, and it looks really nice in here. I'm sure different times of year you have different things blooming. Right, and yeah. and this is really a spring garden, particularly when the clematis is out. Mm. And annuals are great for fillers because once a perennial is bloomed, some look good forever yeah and others brown up and really don't look very nice and if uh -huh. you can plant something in front of it it kind of takes your eye away from exactly. the, the very unhappy brown right right <laughs> nice well let's take a look at some of the other gardens you have here we'll kind of wander around the, the back of your house and see what you have over here i have a question for us already too oh. from our viewers janet oh. this yes is from Lori and asking what are your favorite plants and what are your biggest mistakes with them? <laughs> <laughs> well, the biggest mistakes are not looking up a plant to find out where it really would be happy growing. Mm. Oh, yeah. Because you decide, oh, okay, I want that plant here. It would really look nice and uh -huh. you put it there and it just looks miserable. Oh. <laughs> and, you know, so I've learned by the second year, if it's not looking like it's going to be happy, you have to move it. You yeah. just have to move it. Right, right, right. And, and things happen like also too. that you, you don't get a choice on. Mm. See how tall these Rebecca's are? Yeah. And these are shorter. They're exactly oh, yeah. the same. Uh huh. I came out one day earlier in June, and oh. they had been completely yeah. skeletonized, oh. this section. Wow, and wow. I caught it quickly, so they've rebounded. Yeah. But... I mean, <laughs> they dwarf the plants they, they, for you. <laughs> exactly. The plant had to put so much energy in getting more leaves right. that it couldn't 
So something was eating these? Yeah, some, I okay. think a caterpillar of some sort, yeah, some, which oh, okay. only needed a couple of days and then probably right. is somewhere down there to come back yeah, next year. Yeah, their pupil form uh, is going or whatever. Through their, yeah. yeah. But this is quite stunning, the way you have this mm. trellis here, and then you have the flowers just up against it. Well, and the rain comes off the roof, uh -huh. and so especially this year, it'll just take everything down with it. Mm. It'll be lying down, right, right. so I've sure. had this trellis made so that it can hold everybody kind up. Kind of keep everybody vertical, right. yeah. <laughs> And, and, and this tree that you have here is kind of an interesting story. Can you tell us a little well, bit about it? This is called a tamarix. It is related to a tamarack. It is. Oh, um, really? Huh. It's very brittle and needs to be in a dry place. It's very happy in Colorado. It's considered a junk tree, really, there because it yeah. kind of takes over. It's had a hard time with all this rain. You shouldn't see all this light. It should just be full of green. Yeah. And it is starting to turn pink down here. Oh, right. Look at this. And huh. when it is in full bloom, which usually by this time of year it is, but not yet because of rain and no sun, if you stand under it, it's just like, hmm. The bees are so happy. Mm. Oh, they, they really like it. it. It's a great they pollinator it. tree. Yes. Huh? Wow. And it's not invasive here because we're wet. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're a little too wet this year. But <laughs> and this one looks like it could be a big tree if you let it grow. It can, except it'll break. Oh, so it'll just okay. look very messy and broken if you mm -hmm. don't hard prune every spring. Yeah. And it's very late leafing out, not till June 1st. So uh -huh. every year you think, oh, are you, are you alive? <laughs> You're so afraid it's dead, but it's not. It's one of those trees, right. yeah, one yeah. of those plants. Wow, yeah. that's cool. Well, it's nice to have a little friend here. Yeah, it's it, it will pink up. I think it's really trying on the top where it gets mm -hmm. more sun. Yeah. And it will be nice, but it, it's a difficult year for some plants. Mm. Yeah. I'm sure they're writing me a long letter saying, don't do that to me again. <laughs> <laughs> well, my eye caught this uh, arch you have over here. Yes. And the beautiful plant, the vine that you have growing up there. And uh, maybe you could tell us what that is. It's a porcelain vine. Porcelain vine. Ampelopsis, okay. real name. And well, I really like it because of the variation and the pink stems, yeah. which are very unusual. Yeah, really. And it comes from the ground every year. Uh huh. So you think it's dead, and yeah. eventually it does come up. Uh huh. Now, does it flower as well? It oh, yeah, has it does. a I can very, see. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't. Some little flowers. The bees flowers. like it, but like, here's one. Yeah. But it, it's not showy. That's, it, it's that's really as much for as the, it does. The vine it's and for the, the vine. The variegated yeah. leaf. And to get something going up so it isn't so plain. Right, and that's a, that's a great tip, you know, having something here, especially because you have this big wall of your shed behind it. You want to have something that's going to kind of pull cover it all together it. and cover exactly. it. Exactly. And so everything else, and I think you mentioned to me, so you can plant things underneath it. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and the clematis is finished, but when it was in bloom, it was a deep mm. blue with red maroon mm. edging. and. Just yeah. together, it was. It makes a big show. It we'll see some other it. ones here in your yeah. property, but I love these seed pods. Yeah, that's probably one of the the big calling cards for clematis. I actually um, have a clematis question. If you can field one yes. right oh, now, sure, Charlie yeah. and Janet. Uh, hello from Randolph. We are looking forward to watching the garden visit to Janet's Norwich Garden. Here's a question: Are clematis bloom? Clematis, I say it wrong. It doesn't matter. It depends it, on what no, side no of the, the pond you're on. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell where I'm from. Uh, bloom profusely this summer. If I snip off the spent blooms, will it bloom some more? I don't believe clematis will come back. Okay. Some plants, if you deadhead it, will keep coming for you. I'm pretty sure clematis mm. puts out what it's going to do, and that's it. Got it. There you go. Sometimes okay. you get a secondary bloom later mm -hmm. in the year. Yeah. But it's not because of deadheading. It just mm. yeah. And if it is going to come back, it'll be the earlier varieties, the, you know, the right. ones that bloom first. Mm -hmm. And we'll see actually some um, around her property that, that I have as well. Yeah. Um, that are the smaller flowered ones, and they tend to flower longer. So instead right. of reblooming, they just keep blooming. Ah. Which and is really and hold nice. hold the flower longer too. Right. Whereas yeah. the big ones tend to. It falls off and breaks right. it. And that's it's a it. big show and then pfft, it's gone. Right. <laughs> Speaking of big shows, let's go take a look at this island bed you have okay. back here. You still have some lilies blooming. Look at that. We're trying. Yeah, that, I mean, everything is kind of late this year. So usually right. by now, I would guess lilies would have been long gone. Huh? Well, these are late, later blooming, so that they're they're almost when they should be. Yeah. I, I lost a lot of the big, tall oriental lilies from the frost that we had. Oh, in okay. Yeah. So they'll be back next year, but they just said, that's it, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had problems with the red lily leaf beetle on in any of these? They certainly exist. They don't seem to like the oriental lilies as much. They love the Asiatic and the uh, tiger lilies. Okay. Yeah. And I used to come home from work and madly kill them because... <laughs> 
I didn't want to poison things. <laughs> right. And now I do see them on occasion, but I believe the New Hampshire Extension Service has released parasitic wasps. Oh, and they so seem to like. They seem to make a difference. They really? seem to like those beetles. That's nice. Yeah. I read they've done the same thing for the ash green ash borer. Mm. Oh. So hopefully that will come under control. That's great. Soon. Yeah, for those at home who are wondering about the red lily leaf beetle, if you don't know about it, you probably will if you grow Asiatic lilies. It's a red, bright red beetle that comes out just as the, the plant is coming out of the ground. Absolutely in March. Yeah, <laughs> even March, right. And what it does is that it'll start chewing on the leaves, but then it lays eggs on the undersides of the leaves that turn into these slug-like masses. Oh, just they're disgusting. All disgusting. And one of the things they do to protect themselves is they poop on the themselves. That's even make more disgusting, right? Uh, so if you can control the adult, you don't get as many of the slugs, which do most of the damage. Um, or you can just take a rubber glove on your hand and just run it right up the stem and squish them and, and, and kill them that way. Yep. Yeah. But you have some other great plants in here too. Yep. Maybe you could tell us about um, them. Most people don't know that we can grow broom here. Mm, and this, ooh. it doesn't, it's not in bloom now because it's spring, but it holds for about a month with bright yellow daffodil flower, uh, colored, colored flowers. Colored flowers, yeah. Tiny, but just masses of them. So mm. you have this lovely yellow. And in another bed, I have a much taller one. Mm -hmm. The ones I like that I saw in England are peach colored. They don't grow here, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. It's just like the scotch broom you'd see like in California, right, places right. like that. Yeah, bright yeah. yellow flowers Some in the plants. spring. But what's really uh, beautiful about this garden is you have the cochiana, you have the lilies, uh, you have a number of plants, but you also have brought in some goldenrod, which kind of reflects the meadow around you. Yes, and there are some wonderful varieties of goldenrod now that have been hybridized, mm -hmm. and one's called fireworks, and unfortunately it's not in bloom today, but it looks like fireworks. It looks and like so fireworks, it's yeah. it's really nice to come out and see it. Right, giving exploding, you a exploding, so Exploding, exactly, because <laughs> yeah. it really looks like that. Uh -huh. Uh, there's a little crocosmia left in the back. Oh, the, the bright red, red the flower, the little yeah. ones. Yeah, okay. They're, they look like they belong in Hawaii. <laughs> and the Angelica purpurea is in the back, the lavender umbrals. It's yeah. a lovely plant, reseeds, and so I just dig it up wherever it's put itself and put it back. And in put it. it back where you want it. Where I noticed the, the bees seem to really like they it, They love too. it. They love it. Yeah, it's yeah. a nice pollinator plant. Is that something you try to incorporate, plants that are good for pollinators? I do. I will certainly plant something that I love, whether or not it's going to attract bees. But I have worked for hummingbirds and bees yeah. to make sure that there is something for them. Uh-huh. And it, I've often been picking raspberries in a red jumpsuit and the hummingbirds think I'm a big flower <laughs> and they come towards me and it's like, oh no, that's not right and off they go. She doesn't have food. <laughs> no, oops, big mistake. <laughs> well, impersonating a flower, that's a, yeah. that's a first, right? Now, and then finally behind there, all the way in the back, you have some beautiful striped grass. You can tell zebra about grass. Zebra, well, of course. <laughs> uh, I put this bed in because I thought, wow, there are all these beautiful ornamental grasses. Yeah. So the first fall, I put in grasses along the back. Right. And in the spring, I realized, oops, big mistake. I should have read about this. They're very invasive, and they were just oh, they were going to take over. So come I dug in and them take up, over. and I put them below the wall, oh, and that's fine. Okay. Oh, they so don't they're beyond great, the wall. Yes, they don't need great soil. Yeah. They'll grow no matter what. Mm -hmm. And they put up beautiful, the zebra grass will put up pink plumes. Oh. Right, in a little bit. Yep. Yeah, and, yeah. And there's there's diamond grass there that will put up white plumes. It just okay. makes a lovely show, particularly a time of year where there's not much left. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And, and and you keep them up in the winter so they, they It depends blow on around. how energetic I am when <laughs> I put it to bed. Because yeah. they're they're a pain to work on in the spring. Uh huh. So if you can get them while they're still upright with right. hand side it, it works. And there's a lot to do in the spring anyway. There is, yeah. yeah, yeah. The fertilizer a, down and everything else. Here's a question sort of related to yes. things in the in a, in the dormant season. Rob is asking, are there any plants that defy winter hibernation to add interest in the dormant periods? So you have these grasses and things that you might leave. Are there any others? Some plants, uh, when they go by, have seed heads, which are quite attractive. Mm -hmm. But by the time a real f number of frosts come, they brown up so much that, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, everyone thinks of them differently. I know people who leave 
what I would call brown dead plants, <laughs> and, and that's fine. Um, You've driven echinacea, my way house, yeah, echinacea <laughs> has a lot of seeds. Sunflowers have a lot of seeds, and if you leave them, the birds can get them. Right. But mm. they look pretty messy by yeah. the time frost has taken them. Mm. Yeah, so you have to yeah. decide how much you want to look at. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. yeah, and I have seen some, like, uh, Rudbeckias with the, the right. dark cones. Yes, and I have if those have a, tall ones. Yeah, but I have a whole bunch of them together, because all the leaves drop and all the petals drop, but the dark cones are there, mm. and then you get a little snow on Ooh, them. That could be I've very seen gardens yeah. that have those. But again, the with the snow, they don't always stand up anymore, is yeah, the problem. Exactly. You know? Leaning <laughs> well, now they're in your way. driveway, as opposed <laughs> it's to... It's a moment in time. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, you can wait until they fall, if mm -hmm. you want to, just yeah. let them stay so the sure. birds can use them, and then take them down. Right, and, and that is looking. what's kind of recommended with perennial gardens right. now, is that you leave the plants there for the pollinators and for the beneficial insects, mm. and then in the spring is when you come in right. and clean everything but up. But it's bu much messier in the spring to try oh, to clean yeah. it up. <laughs> the, we don't mow the meadow uh -huh. until as late in fall as we can, but this year I'm, I'm not sure how we're going to manage it because it is so wet. Right, mm. it's a problem. And machinery down there... It's just going to sink in yeah, the mud. Yeah, I mean, we try to wait for all the pollinators to have done their thing and, and yeah, get the right. advantage of the meadow. But, I mean, I don't have to tell farmers how bad it is. I'm yeah. so glad I don't make a living being a farmer. Being a farmer. Right. Or living in a floodplain. I think yes. you said that. This <laughs> is a, a wetland, but not a floodplain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, you stay that's dry. fine with me. Well, let's continue on our tour. Oh, this, this contraption, I think, oh, is what yes. you were going to yeah, show us. Oh, get out of the way. Oh. <laughs> this okay, is, I'm getting out is, of the way. <laughs> this is an enforcer. This is the enforcer. And I so come this out is for at the night deer. and turn it on. Right. This is a deer. Now watch, it won't go off because I want it to. Mm. Maybe you have to run in front of it. Uh -oh. Yeah. oh, don't do that. <gasps> ah, it's a motion-sensitive uh -oh. sprinkler I'll that's here for the deer. I'll try a different one. Okay. Whenever you want it, oh, oh, look, it wants you've to go. thought about it. Right. Maybe you don't oh, look yeah. like a deer. There you go. <laughs> I don't know why it's only doing it. It may have trouble with the battery. So. Okay. Um, but you have them all around your property? I have six because yeah. you can't garden here with deer. Right. Uh, it's impossible. And this really keeps them away. It does. I thought I was either going to have a nervous breakdown or quit. <laughs> <laughs> and I put these I'm in. Glad you didn't and <laughs> Yeah, it seems to work. It does work. So do you hear these in the middle of the night going off? As I don't deer? hear them in the house, but I I have one over there that does, isn't quite sure I've turned it off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes I'm going to <laughs> get zapped. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Motion-sensitive deer repellent. There they're, we go. They're not high-tech, so sometimes their uh, yeah. reliability is, right. in terms of turning off isn't great. Well, this is late in the season, but you still have some beautiful, a couple of examples of beautiful daylilies. Yeah. And look and at this, this beautiful, yellow this and burgundy beauty. colored one over here. And it the is burgundy just one there. And yeah. the burgundy colored one over there. Do you remember the names of any of these? No, I'm sorry, but uh, I do get them from Shriners. Shriners, the, the iris people. The iris people, and yeah. they just have gorgeous daylilies. Uh -huh. mm. They also have reblooming, so there is a new... A new stem coming up here. Wow. Oh, yeah. I can't right, remember right. all the ones because it's a fairly new bed. Um, which ones rebloom? But that's yeah. a really nice addition yeah. when you have daylilies you love and they're going to come back. Right. <laughs> At least exactly. some of them. And that's a nice thing about these daylilies, especially these newer ones. They're, they're not only beautiful, they're ruffled and they're, they're bigger flowers. Oh, who could possibly even dream that up? It's wow. so gorgeous. I, I mean, so look pretty. at Mother Nature yeah. does. But also, they rebloom. They, they bred them so that they keep blooming. Yeah. I have some new mm. ones, too, are like that. They're still blooming. They yeah. started in July. They're going through August. Wow. They just keep sending up flower stalks. Which uh, and this year, I think, great. probably more than normal because they get enough water. Usually, right. it's drying out by mm -hmm. August, and they're saying, oh, I've they don't enough. like it dry. No. Yeah, yeah. No. exactly. But the, you have um, this beautiful plant, yeah, this too. This is an, an annual that seeds itself. Mm -hmm. It's a euphorbia called Snow on the Mountain. And when it first oh, comes up, uh, and until about two weeks ago, or th mm -hmm. uh, maybe three weeks, but two weeks, I'm going to say, it's just green. And someone might say, well, why are you growing that green <laughs> plant? You know, <laughs> no, But then it does this beautiful white, and it yeah. just adds light and air to wherever they are. Mm -hmm. Now, this year I have fewer than I'm used to. They, they had seeded themselves everywhere, yeah. but I think with all the water... They just couldn't take it. Oh, right. It's too Euphorbias much. tend to be more of a dry yeah, yeah. soil plant. Now, yeah. someone asked me what kind of were my favorite plants, and I have a few new ones that I really like. And uh -huh. one is the indigofera, 
which I got from Plant Delights. Uh -huh. You can see one little pink flower oh, on right, it. Oh, right, this one right in but here. But it's yeah, really yeah, a spring, it's uh -huh. a spring bloomer. Uh -huh. And it cute. comes up from the ground. Here you would chop it back even though it gets a little woody and let it re regenerate every year. Mm -hmm. And it just has very pretty foliage. Uh, the, it's a spring bloomer. And it, it's just a beautiful plant. And the other one, which doesn't look great now, yeah. is called Salvia Newtons. Mm -hmm. It puts up a, uh, stalks about uh, thin wisteria-like flowers at the end. Huh. And it just drapes and looks gorgeous. Mm, nice, nice. And uh, the catalog said they were zone six, but I thought, well, some perennials will bloom if you have a long season will bloom at the end even there it goes, oh, there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> watch out it's coming our way <laughs> <laughs> well now we know it works we right? know it works exactly the battery's not dead it's got a mind of its own it might be ai i'm uh, not sure I, yes i that's the trouble <laughs> that's cute it's <laughs> <laughs> great so where do you get your inspiration for some of these gardens and, and plants i know you've traveled a lot and you had a business i do see things when hiking i found a, a plant called orlea the common name is minoan lace uh-huh in croatia i came across i said you are so beautiful what are you <laughs> and of course it took me about three or four months to figure out what it was but yeah. once i found it it's uh -huh. a biennial mm. and it's in the carrot queen anne's lace oh, family yeah. okay but a much better lace maker yeah. <laughs> and so i grow it and you put it in very early because it likes cool weather to right. start right and it always just looks gorgeous nice, so I nice. Love it. what's huh. the temperature in croatia similar enough to here similar but it's... quite dry yeah it okay. was growing in very dry ah, okay place yeah yeah because yeah. here is what zone five yes you grow yeah, yeah. My, the... my guess is croatia is six Zone six. Or at least yeah. some of them. I mean, they have mountains and they have seas, right. so right. they probably right. have a big con Warm connection. Up. Yeah. Question from uh, a viewer What's your daily routine like to maintain a garden <laughs> this size? Yeah, what is your daily routine like? <laughs> Until about a week ago, three or four hours a day, and from April through mid July, or actually the end of July, it would be four to six hours a day. Oh. That's a full-time job. It yeah. is. And yeah. when I worked, because I own my own business, I could say, okay, I'm not going in until 1 o'clock. I'm right. going to garden this morning. Wow. Mm -hmm. And you did all of this yourself? I did. And there you still was, do? I still do. Right, yes. right. Wow. Although I'm getting a little old. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard on the body to bend over all the time. Is that mm -hmm. the, yeah. the primary reason for moving out of here? No, or? just we made a decision to go to assisted living because of age. And I'm one of 11 kids and mm. I've seen my older sister struggle with what happens with age mm. and sure. uh, just mm -hmm. seems I'm not sure anyone really wants to do it but I think it's a good decision for us right mm. right but you have all these beautiful flowers and here. I couldn't be here and say oh I'm not going to do the garden yeah, right yeah, that, that would, would be, be really hard right. but I certainly couldn't mow it <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well you do have some big gaudy flowers you know, I this do time of year. yes it's almost look Fake. Uh, they almost yeah. look fake. The They're hibiscus. hibiscus, the hardy they, hibiscus. They, they start wow. this lovely pink, yeah. so you yeah. don't realize you're going to get a big white flower. It's like a, a dinner plate size. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So um, they look a little as if they've been nuked, but. <laughs> 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 and my clematis is. Uh, someone well. was asking about rebloom. This is a second flush yeah. but much less than the first mm, round and right, that's claire right. de lune she's one of my favorites mm. really claire like de lune her. claire de lune just like the song yeah, yeah. that's a nice one and that she there were at least 30 of them wow when huh? it was in full bloom it's a good producer yeah. it's just the secondary not so good not mm. as much yeah but these hardy hibiscus are fun i think we talked about yeah. it before because they're very slow to come up in the spring yes you're sure they're dead and not going to come back right and, and you're like oh, okay it's not going to come oh, up yeah. and then june sometime all of a sudden the shoots all of a sudden come they're up, coming up and then yeah. by august you get these yeah. amazing flowers yeah. um and it just dies back to the ground and comes back year after year right in fact and they don't look like they belong here i mean they look tropical right yeah mm. and, and one year for folks at home you know i had these and i planted something else in place of where it was was because I thought the hibiscus isn't coming back and that other plant grew fine and that hibiscus never grew that year the next spring the hibiscus started growing in the other plant so I took the new plant out and I left the hibiscus because I figured <laughs> the new plant it deserved to be there. <laughs>
<laughs> Let's go around the corner here because you've done something really interesting uh, to keep a lot of these big plants upright. Uh, and that's really a challenge for a lot of people at home is you get big plants that look beautiful, say, in, in early summer, and then what happens is that they kind of flop over. But for example, and lie this, down on something that hasn't bloomed yet. And yes. so now it won't bloom because it's covered. But this Baptiste is a great example. Look how beautiful this is with the nice foliage. Now this, yeah, of course, nice and Baptisia healthy. blooms in the, in the spring, early yep. summer, with nice flower stalks. And then by now, it's all gone. But if you look at it the way you've done it, you've, um, you've got, you can see the stalks. So you can underneath. see the, the ring that's around it. Right, right, and underneath. And this then, is this is what they are. It's called the peacock system, peacock. and you've got stakes of all different heights. Okay. And you have a rubber fitting that goes mm -hmm. up and down as you wish. They also come with extra clips, like for delphinium. Yep. You can start low and then trade out a taller stake later with more clips to put more rings around. Oh, so the rings go through the clips. Right. That's how it works. Right. Okay. And so just two of the sizes that you can have uh -huh. you've got this more like for a peony yeah and this would be for the top towards a delphinium mm -hmm. to make sure that it can move but not break right so the and, nice thing about it is it's adjustable exactly yeah and the the other thing is that usually with supports well they aren't the rings that they sell as peony supports they hold it off the ground but they still get the elbow and you have to pick it <laughs> because it's yeah. broken right, right whereas these instead of having to put the support out before it blooms and mm -hmm. all you're looking in the garden at all these metal rings <laughs> yeah right before just before it blooms you can take this go around the peony bring it oh. up with a stake put it into the little holes yeah. and if it's going to be a thunderstorm you can bring it right up under their noses <laughs> and when the dry out Put it back down again. Yeah. Of course, it never dries out here, but yeah. So that way, you don't have to look at all the stakes in your garden, right. and you can adjust and, them. And as you they do. really don't show. You, you kind of hide them. Mm. Yeah. And if you need a row of something to be supported, mm -hmm. this works the same way. Oh, and see. you can put one in here, and on the other side, another one, and you can just keep going if you've got a long right. row. Right. You can still adjust that height right. because you're using those movable little uh, attachments. And this. Guy. You can put any oh, way you want, uh -huh. wrap it around, uh -huh. whatever. So yeah. uh, I use these mostly for things like echinacea because they get top heavy and they'll fall over. Mm -hmm. But you put this around them, you don't really see it. And it just keeps them from putting their noses in the dirt. <laughs> yeah, right, keeping up in vertical. Yeah, I'm just really impressed at how beautiful that baptisia is and, and how you've pruned it in such a way you can see the stems. So it almost looks like a little bamboo forest Well, down it there. hasn't been pruned, though. Oh, it hasn't? No, just it's just naturally... as long as you don't... Yeah. I mean, it seems like this should be below, but it isn't. The stems are actually just don't show because usually it's draping over and you can't tell. You can't see them. Yeah. yeah that's a great. And these, oh, particularly yes, I, I have some that are about this tall. Mm -hmm. When you have the really tall lilies, yeah. if you don't stake them when they're in bloom, like with 10, 12 blooms, yeah, and you come down and it's broken and that's and it's it. A shame. Yeah. yeah. That's it. And then you get plants like the blue ones over here that just seem to like to stand up uh, all on their own. <laughs> some, yes, are extremely hardy. That's a lobelia that uh, I call it a bully. <laughs> I, I like them, obviously, because I've got them. So I've let them re put themselves in that bed because mm -hmm. that's a really rose and spring bed, and it doesn't have much going on if I don't do that. Yeah. But don't mix it with other lobelias. They come in lovely, lovely reds and maroons and purples and pinks yep. and if you and white even and if you mix them that's going to take over ha huh, that's the it'll great push, blue it'll, yeah they'll just push everybody else out right. and that likes uh, wet conditions right it seems to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well here it is growing and, and very, it's a little wet down yes, here yes it's very invasive <laughs> here and that is a wet garden yep. when i dug it out I hit water at about three feet, <laughs> oh, and wow. it was it was fall. It was August, and was yeah. not. It wasn't a wet year. Uh huh. So, I said, okay, well, duh. There's a pond. It's clay. Of course, it's wet. Sure, sure. So I dug it down about three feet. Mm -hmm. Piles everywhere. I was a little stronger then. <laughs> Put peat moss, paper, sawdust everything I could think of to right. fill in sand even. I took, uh -huh. we had sand at the end of the pond and I 
put some of that, put it in, and I put a drain in ah, to the pond because everything was just going to be sitting in water otherwise. Right. And by the end, when I was pushing everything back in, the neighbors came over and said, we can't bear to watch you do this any longer. <laughs> so they all came and helped? That's right, they all came and That's helped. Nice. They said, you just sit down, you sit down. we'll finish. We'll finish it. Right, yeah, I can see how your land slopes down here. Yeah, yeah. Right yeah. The just pond, was so the water it, just yeah. flows right through. Yeah, the water comes off the hillside through the culvert. I was picking hydrangeas last week, oh, and I was standing in water. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just, oh, and luckily, standing water. It was, yeah. it was over my, oh my gosh. gardening shoes. Yeah. That's, over, a nice, that's a nice way to really put some color and some brightness yeah. into this really shady yeah, area yeah. with all the trees behind it, those panicle yeah, Because otherwise, it's just dark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some questions for you. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Cammie writes, my peonies have lately had many buds and usually just one flower. It's very frustrating. Any thoughts about how to perhaps uh, remedy that? They could have botrytis, which is a nasty fungus. Hmm. So she probably looked that up. If okay. She, some people don't realize that ants are important and they think they've got a problem with ants, so they kill the ants. Mm -hmm. Now their buds are, are sticky and have trouble. Mm. Mm. Okay. And I've read that may not be true, but I, I see it all the time, so mm -hmm. I really don't believe that. <laughs> right. And also, if their peonies not getting enough sun or yes. if they're planted a little too deep, mm. they're not going to form flower buds. The readily. deepness is a real it's, issue. Uh, it yeah. seems like, okay, this delicate plant, peonies are not delicate ah. if you treat them right. And right. They, they need to be one and a half to two inches below the surface only, no more. Oh, wow. Right. So eventually, if it's too deep, it will form buds higher up, but it takes time. Mm. So if it's getting plenty of sun, the soil's good, you don't need to over fertilize. They, they really, they, I mean, I know people who've never touched their peonies and they bloom like anything. Mm. <laughs> so it, the sun is the important part. Yeah. And um, if it's not blooming, maybe it's a variety that doesn't really like our climate. Yeah, yeah it could definitely be that, that I mean, that happens too. Right. Mm -hmm. And also, you don't want to put a lot of mulch on them too no, because the you mulch... end up burying them and, and mm. you had the right depth, but then you put more mulch and mm. compost on yeah. them and you bury it deeper and deeper. Got it. Yeah. A word about mulch. In England, <laughs> I ran it, I was looking at beautiful gardens, which are beautiful, and a lot of British people say of Americans, we have mulch gardens. Yeah. Ah. Yes. I don't spend money on mulch. I put leaves on in the fall and I plant fairly tight, which they always say put X number of feet apart or mm -hmm. inches. I don't do that. <laughs> I want them to fill in. If the yeah. sun doesn't hit the soil, the weeds can't grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It also just saves a lot of time weeding right. and I don't want to look at dirt. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, I notice you don't have much more food yeah. around these no. gardens. No, and the leaves work in, in the fall in yeah. case we don't have snow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the worms work it in and right. they just improve your soil. Yeah. And then by the time you would be putting mulch on, you don't need it. Yeah. Now, if it's really dry, which last summer it was, mm -hmm. I do rake my neighbor's leaves <laughs> and make a pile at the side of the road down the, down the side of the bank. And I then have rotting leaves that I can use for mulch right. if I need it yep. for plants that I'm worried about right. getting right. too dry. Right. I do have a wonderful watering system, a, a very heavy wheel that sits on the ground and it you can dial a size like a, a circle or just a straight line and a distance mm. Mm. now once the plants grow up if you just leave it on the ground it's going to hit the first tall plants and just that's as far as it's going, going right yeah. so i put it on a log with a nail sticking out and hang it on that so that it's yeah, the arch up is nice. Oh. Right. Yes. Well, maybe we'll go look at some flocks over here. And Mary, if you have more questions, I do. You there, certainly are welcome to send questions. There is in. one We're here for you guys, ooh, too. lily left, poor thing. Oh, way out <laughs> there. Right there. there. There were probably about a dozen. Right. But I'm really um, Just save one for today. Yeah. Are you interested in your tall garden flocks? Because they look beautiful, and I don't see a lot of mildew on them. Well, again, the variety is important. I know that white one is called David. Uh huh. Um, I have a white one that for whatever reason is really invasive you cannot get rid of it to save your life and it always has mold oh mm. yeah, if, yeah now this year it's wet although i don't i have less mold this year everywhere than i mm -hmm. usually do so i think that part of getting mold in the fall is being too dry and mm -hmm. stressed right and that's what causes it mm -hmm. so if you have flocks that always have mold i mean always yeah 
take them out, mm. give the land a rest for a couple of years, and get what are called mold resistant. Right. Mm. Well, it's because of they're very yeah. good ones now. Yeah. Um, the old fashioned ones are beautiful if they're in the right spot, but. You know, when they get all that mold, they just don't look well. No, no. Mm. Yeah, David's a good one, and Shortwood's another. There's a number of them. So we're looking yeah. at those tags. Make sure you look at them. I mean, a good company will say mildew resistant. Yes, they'll say that right on the and tag. And a not yeah. good company won't tell you. Right. <laughs> but I, what I really like about this, is this is this a um, type of euphorbia? That's, it, it's a, or a sedum. A, a sedum. A it's sedum. A okay. Site, no, wait. It's cypress spurge. Cypress so spurge. spurge is a sedum. Right. Right. Exactly. So, and it looks like cypress. Yeah. And look at this beautiful. It's a bit in the spring. Wow, I so mean, it soft. has a few yellow flowers on it now that are huh. brighter yellow in the spring. Yeah. So oh, it's, yeah, it's yeah, doing flowers. it again. I think it's confused with all the water. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit invasive, but it's easy to pull out. But I love and the it's a texture nice fill. Mm. Yeah, oh, oh. It's, you just like to pet it. You just want to yeah. pet it. It's yeah. like a lamb. It's yeah. really right? soft yeah. and lovely. Yes. Very nice. Yep. Wow. And up, up high, <laughs> we, yes, have we have your Rosa Rosa Sharon, Sharon, which is a classic late summer, yep. early fall shrub. And mine seeds everywhere, and I don't mind because it's easy to pull out, okay. and I can give it as presents. Oh, <laughs> nice. Oh, that's a nice idea. <laughs> so, Here's yes, some so, questions. Sorry oh, to sure. interrupt. Oh, yeah, um, no, but please. folks have questions from um, about... Cutting back perennials during the growing season, how often are you doing that? I don't cut perennials back except in mid-June for the ones I'm trying to make fatter and bloom yeah. a little later. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the daisy family, heleniums and rubecchias, you can cut back and they will come back for you. Mm. Uh, make sure whatever you're cutting back is okay with that because sometimes you have just cut it and you will not get any bloom that right. year. And it says, uh, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. don't do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like cutting quickly. me. If you cut my head off, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> and this next one from Marie, is there a way to propagate Baptisia from the seeds of seed pods? My guess is yes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I go online, I'm sure someone tells mm. you. Sometimes. Um, Usually they have to at least go through a dormant time of right. below zero for, or mm -hmm. below freezing for a certain number of, of days. It's like peonies. They don't grow in Florida because they don't get frost. Right. And it has to have, I think, 40-something days right. of below different freezing. Places, or you have ah. a peony, but you don't mm -hmm. have any flowers. So. Got it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, the baptisia, usually you have to put it in a refrigerator right. or maybe put it in with some damp peat moss or something in a mm. pot in a refrigerator. And pretty much you're mimicking what happens yeah. in nature. And then you can get them to germinate. But it takes a while mm. for baptisia that, to yeah, get big enough. I would started quite a few things from seed when mm. I started because I didn't know enough and I didn't have any money. So that's what I did. Right. And then I read that you really can't do that with some plants. But I did. And it was just pure luck that yeah. it worked. Uh -huh. With baptisia, the hybrids... That's Hello Yellow, and it, it's a lovely hybrid. Um, with Baptisia, so the, the old-fashioned ones, which has happened to me, and we'll see it when we get around the other side, they tend to die out in the middle. Mm. Mm. So you have a circle in the middle of nothing, oh. and it, it's around the edge, and it keeps going like this. And they're not easy to transplant. No, when you try to deep. dig them up, they're really hard. Yeah, exactly. and, you know, you'll break your shovel. Yeah. You try to put them back in the middle, and it says, I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> you did all that work for nothing. <laughs> Enjoy while you got it. Right, right. right. <laughs> well, let's continue around, especially around to the front of the house, because that's a beautiful spot this time of year. Um, and you do have this magnificent magnolia on our way here as we're walking through. Which is about twice as tall as anybody else's magnolia. I'm not sure you, why, but it's you very happy. This, I, I did, and I actually wow. planted it down on the other side uh -huh. and decided it was the wrong place. Yeah. And so I dug it up. It was my size. Yeah. Uh, Put wow. it here. Much happier here. Likes it. <laughs> 50 years later, yeah. here we go. And it flowers, right? <laughs> magnolia. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. It, it, it flowers flower. you can see the mid buds, April. Actually. Oh, early, yes. early. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. A few years ago, we had a really early spring. It was mid-March. Wow. Oh, wow. So this actually blew, was in bloom, and just as the frost hit, it was finished. Uh -huh. So it didn't have the leaves out yet, so it, it was okay. Some, some things really got zapped. Mm. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, you have some really fascinating plants in here. You're talking about travel, and um, yeah. <laughs> this plant, this beautiful pink-flowered plant that's really tall, is a hollyhock, right. but not your traditional hollyhock. No, it's a Turkish hollyhock. Turkish hollyhock. And it seeds itself. Yeah. It does not get rust, which your 
lovely oh, barnyard. That's cool. Turkish. Well, it Ooh. may, but it's not susceptible. So right, right. it would have to be a special, especially hard year for yeah. it to get that. Yeah. Um, you have to pull it out because it, it does really seed easily. Right. Is it still a biennial like the other hollyhocks? Um, I don't believe so. Oh, so it seeds itself. Like I think a, it's a short-lived perennial. Short-lived perennial. Five, seven years and then. Right. So these but because plants, it seeds, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Right, so you'll be cutting these plants down, and then right, and I'll probably up. pull out a few to yeah, put them back where I really sure. want them. But well, you can see it's loaded with flower yeah, buds. Yeah. Wow! And it's it's mostly finished now, but uh -huh. it was its peak was a couple of weeks ago, really. Yeah, yeah, and here's yeah. An, another good example. I just noticed this looking down of this uh, plant support system, and this is kind of a it, it's they were really working nicely here. Yeah. You know, th they're a Leatrice, and they were really okay. going to lie on the ground, and right. especially with all this rain, they were going to rot. Oh, mm. so okay. I pick them up and put them in a ring. And then you can just adjust this by pulling it up yep. like that. Yep. Oh, oh, that's kind of yeah. cool. And pushing it back down. Huh. Really cool. I like that system. And these guys are another one. It's a Japanese aster. Oh, the ones with the white. They're white with right a little, here. yep. Yeah. I cut that back at least a foot. Oh, you did? Because I've learned, I, this is the first year I did it, uh -huh. because they get tall and leggy and yeah. they just fall over. Oh, okay, nice. Well, you do have some things that's flowering right here, this white flower. Uh, this is an Artemisia. An Artemisia? A, a ghost plant is its other name. It, ghost? It, it, it will be really? a little whiter, huh. but it, that's pretty much what its flower does. And it's basically wow, just that. to add to the general soft atmosphere. Right, right. Huh. right. Movement and uh, yeah, texture. Uh, ghost with the idea that it kind of floats it's white. around. Yes. And it's white, yeah. <laughs> nice. It hasn't scared me yet. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> and this lovely plant oh, is a, is a type here? of meadow rue. Meadow rue. The rain true. just comes down so hard. Yeah. It's never fallen over before. I mean, uh -huh. you can see the piece in the back. It's just a very tall, beautiful plant. Oh, wow. Look and if this. I try to straighten it out, it'll break. And so oh, I see. So you're just letting it flop over here. I have to here. let it. It's lying on top of the Esculapius, and I'm sorry about that oh, little plant, but well. that's what <laughs> happens. Some little, little bee bombs in the, there that yeah. are trying to bloom. Yeah, this is a great, another and great plant. And the bees bee love it, yeah, and look at them all. the hummingbirds mm -hmm. love it, too. Do they? They do. Oh, that's sweet. It's a nice color this time of year. You don't often see this no, kind of deep it's, purple. It's, um, beautiful color. It's hard to get away from pink and white. <laughs> yes, it is hard. You've done a good job, though. What's the big um, daisy-like flower in the back there? That it seems like is it's... a gigantic, is part of its name in Latin, Yeah. Uh, sunflower, oh. which is a, it's Heliopsis? a Heliopsis. Yeah. It's a perennial. Uh -huh. It really spreads well, and it's hard on your shovel, <laughs> to, oh. but I take about six inches all the way around it uh -huh. with a shovel and dig it out in the spring Yeah, because it will just, it'll be huge. Yeah, right. I mean, well, it's already, already huge. huge that way, but it yeah. will be, it will just creep mm. through everything otherwise. But I can see you've used that plant support system. I do. So I it have keeps it upright. The, the rings also come in halves. And uh -huh. thirds. Hmm. Oh, so you can. Expand. So you can. The, the rings don't move, but they come in different sizes. So yeah. I have thirds on this because I need, I think, five of them to get all the way around. Mm. Right, right. And if they're in halves, they go too far into the plant. I mean, mm -hmm. you could do it, right. but just going on the outside is what you want. Yeah. Mm. Hugging it. Hugging, the Hugging plant. it. Yeah. Here's a question about those plant supports yes. from yeah. Wendy. Where do you find those? <clears throat> Online. They're from Holland. Mm -hmm. I know. Previously, before um, Gardener Supply, Long Acres had some, mm -hmm. uh -huh. but I needed a lot. <laughs> they're not, buy they're them not by the inexpensive, pallets, yes. but they're high quality, yeah. and they're really, it's called the Peacock System, okay. yeah. and they're and just they'll terrific. Last a long time. They, so yeah. they last a long time. Sure, yeah. 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 Here's a, another question. Uh, what about spreading sweet pepper bush, Clotheria, Clothera? Uh, plethora, plethora, I plethora. think it's called, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I failed my Latin class, it's, it's clear. Um, uh, so they're writing and saying, mine spreads all over the place. Is that right for a clethora to... That's what they do. That's what they do. And so okay. it's up to you where you have it as to whether you want it to fill in mm. or you just dig out what you don't want. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I always feel like a murderess when I do mm -hmm. that. <laughs> 
<laughs> and it's I try to give them away, but not everybody wants. You know, yeah, they don't right. have a place to put them. Yeah. And, you know, that or you can always make another garden. Oh, that's my problem. <laughs> yes. We mentioned earlier about the clematis and the small flowered versions, and you have one in the back. Yes, over this here. one it's is nice Betty example. Corning, and Betty Corning. these okay. are later blooms. So the the original, when it first comes out in june i mean it's been blooming a long time mm. they're about double that size oh, okay. so they're quite big bells yeah um and it holds for a long time compared to the beautiful big ones the big one henry i doesn't bloom very well and i'm wondering if i have it, it may need a little more sun yeah, yeah the crap but uh, it doesn't shade it that much because the sun comes from there but uh -huh. still it's it's never made what i would call a show yeah, and that's what I want. That's what you want. I have right. a white spring bloomer, uh -huh. and it does lots and lots. And mm. I don't know the name because I thought it was Guernsey cream, but it's not. Oh. <laughs> and nobody it's been able to. Keep track I of look names. at all the white uh, clematis, and I also have one I use as a screensaver that's uh -huh. a multi-layered. <laughs> Nobody knows what it is, and I know I didn't order it because when it bloomed, I said, oh, I've never seen you before. Right. And I would remember that I wanted this special thing. Yeah. Well, I notice the color sometimes will shift based on how much sun it's getting and how much shade it's Especially getting. Especially the deeper. light lavender ones yeah. that can mm. be white or lavender, and then mm. they do better in cooler weather. Right, and the weather temperature. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, you have a really cool plant over here. This is one of my favorites. These it's blooming are, right now. They're so nice to <laughs> tell us about this plant. These guys are called licorice, spelled with a Y, L Y C O R R S. Magic lily, which is a very apt name because they come up in the spring with tulip like strappy leather leaves, mm. and then the leaves disappear. And you forget that you have them. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, within a day, they can grow a, a foot. The stem wow. comes up. And within about four or five days, you've got blooms, and they're just, they're just delicate and lovely. Yeah. It's magic. It is. Yeah, it's it's magic. Like magic. That's why they're called magic lilies. And you just have the blooms, no foliage, just no the foliage stem, at the all. Blooms, yeah. And then they'll die back, and then you. And they just cut the stem, the and they come back next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so sweet. And you have to remember they're there because if they're coming up. And you step on them, that's it. Uh, they don't put up another right, stem. Right, right. So. This is a one-shot deal. So right. it's good to tuck them in somewhere where you're remember not Remember where walking. they are, and you're not going to walk there mm -hmm. at that time of year. Yeah, <laughs> right. And remember, yeah, remember, late summer, don't walk in here. Yeah. Don't sign up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, you have a great story about this really tall plant here that the bees are still enjoying as yes, the sun is setting yes. here and the light level is going down. Uh, tell us about this one. So... People always are surprised. That's an impatience. Oh, an impatience. Uh, uh, we think of impatience as a low, a little plant. low thing, yeah. which I actually despise. But <laughs> anyway, sorry anybody who likes impatience. <laughs> so Himalayan balsam is another name. Yeah. They're considered invasive because oh. they spit their seed. I don't know if up here I've got one that I can show. Okay. So if you get in tight there on the seed. Um, They're kind of like jewel weed in that. Yes, here's one. So when I touch this. Oh, oh they just spread their and seed. I touched it before it was ready, but if it was doing it on its own, it literally spits. Yeah. So wow. every spring, the first thing, starting around April 1st, I'm pulling up babies. Oh. And it's not a problem. They're real easy. Oh, they come right out. They come right out. So this is in the middle of my Baptisia. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the Baptisia, the, this is the old-fashioned kind, it opens up in the middle and there's nothing there. Ah. So it blooms in June, yeah. and these guys start so early that they've gotten a good foothold by the time the Baptisia's gotten large. Okay. And now you've got a flower where you wouldn't have one otherwise. Right. <laughs> and this frost that we had mid-May, mm -hmm. I had specifically put them in the middle of the Baptisia. Yeah. Wiped them out. Mm. Oh, wiped so them I out. I thought, I'm huh. done. I, I, I'm not going to have these lovely tall things. And I went down the road where yeah. I knew they spit their seed and had plenty. <laughs> and they survived because they were down the bank oh, and protected. Right, right. So dug them up, put them back. <laughs> now, you get creative about what you have to do. You do. I mean, I can't not garden without these guys. <laughs> I don't give these seed as gifts because I don't want people to be mad at me because right. they really do come up. I mean, uh, all, all summer, I find another one that's made it, right. and I pull it out. So, but the color, mm -hmm. you don't know what color you're going to get. One year, I had all coral, which is the color I want. Yeah. They don't come true to seed, and I'm not sure uh, what. The coral one, there are some coral ones down the road. They're more shaded. Mm. 
So I'm not sure if it's temperature, water, what, what really is. determines it. But every single one in my garden this year is this color, which is my least favorite, uh -huh. only because it's too close to the green and doesn't add light. Right, right. There's a white one, a light pink one, and a coral. Coral, okay. And the coral is the one I really want, uh -huh. but I actually would accept the other two, too, before yeah. this one, but this is... <laughs> this is what you got. This is what I got. So if someone at home wanted to grow one of these, what would they look for in a catalog or... I don't know anybody who sells them. Oh, uh, they're called Himalayan balsam. Himalayan balsam. Himalayan balsam. So where did you get them then? <sighs> Himalaya. <laughs> um, <laughs> <The> Himalayas. <laughs> you know, I can't remember. Huh. My guess is someone gave them to me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice. Which is surprising because, as I said, I I'm not going to give them to anybody because they might be mad at me. Because <laughs> <laughs> literally, you pull out thousands. <laughs> right. They spread all over the place. Wow, and then of course we have lots more phlox over yeah. here, still blooming, and, and some more rudbeckias. And the phlox smells so good, and it's really nice uh, with yeah. the enforcers that I have, because the deer will come down the driveway and terrace the phlox. They really like phlox. Huh. And they will rebloom, but not if they come down again. Oh, okay. So you have a sprinkler somewhere hidden. I have a sprinkler <laughs> under the apple tree that can see oh, the driveway. Oh, the driveway covers the they driveway. They started. I could see like four or five bite-offs because yeah. they're rough. I wouldn't. I always cut with scissors so you don't have that roughness. Uh -huh. And they stopped, so it must have gone off and scared oh, them. Oh, it scared them away. Yeah. Wow, good system. <laughs> <laughs> like, because really the year that made me realize I'm either going to quit gardening, cry, or both, <laughs> uh, they had just not just eaten them once but twice and you yeah. know they can only come back so many times right 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 so this has been great i don't know if we have any more questions that are coming in mostly just people marveling of, of your beautiful gardens oh, yeah. and, and they like feel it. very privileged and happy to be able to see the the gardening that you've been doing um Lori is asking um that she says i hope that you have a garden to care for wherever you go but a smaller garden definitely small <laughs> <laughs> and yeah just the, how lovely your gardens have been um just lots of folks pouring their admiration for all of your beautiful work so yeah well lovely. i was worried when i when we first moved here that i didn't really want to be so close to the road i grew up way in the country in ah. jericho mm. up north near essex and underhill and then i realized you know this is a a social life. Yeah. People walk by, people come, bring mm -hmm. friends from wherever that are visiting, say, well, this is a thing we can go see. Yeah. So I get nice. a lot of visitors yeah. and a lot of chatting on the road, so it's very nice. nice. <laughs> so if you only had a couple plants to take with you, do you have any... F oh, tough question. It's like, <laughs> it's like choosing question. your children, you <laughs> know. <laughs> there are some tree peonies, one called Terpsichore. Yeah. Goddess of dance and song. Mm -hmm. Oh. And she's peach with maroon edging. Mm. She's gorgeous. Nice. Um, my two new favorites, the Indigo Farah yeah. and Salvia Newtons. Uh -huh. Magic Lily, I'm sure. Yeah, you're take <laughs> Bulbs those, are man. easier to do because you don't yeah. need to care for them. You just mm -hmm. right. once you, put you put get them in the ground and your hand hurts, but then you're done. <laughs> 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 and uh, other than that, it's just really hard. Right. Because. I mean, if you have a small garden, you can't grow the big things. Mm. Yeah. They just take up the whole thing. Right, but right. in a bigger yard, you can yeah. do that. Yeah. Wow. Well, if you have any more questions at home, um, we're here. Um, and uh, we really like to thank you, Janet, for You're walking welcome. us around. My We'd pleasure. like to give you a vase of flowers. <laughs> <laughs> Which you arranged yourself. Of course, you arranged. Because <laughs> they're all your flowers. Yeah. There's a little Lenaria left. And this is another plant that not everyone should have because you cannot put it in your garden. It's false spirea. Oh. oh. And it it has these little tapioca pearls mm -hmm. yeah. and then they open uh -huh. and it doesn't last but you know a couple of days from now once they're all open it starts to brown up pretty quickly. Right. But it's a a bush that's woody and new growth both and it just spreads like oh. crazy. So oh. I have it down Near down, the meadow, mm -hmm. and it, you yeah. mow up to it, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and it has these lovely flowers, which the bees right. adore. But yeah, yeah, you keep the tame things close to the house, exactly. and the wild things mm -hmm. in the wild areas. Far away, far away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's a comment from Dan, who says, "We have been going past your house for about 20 years, wow. as have many others, and always admired your gardens. We hope the new owners try to keep them up." They say they would like to, I, and they need help, which they were being very realistic. Good. And I 
can't promise that will happen. It, it's overwhelming for yeah. most people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having us You're here welcome. and sharing your beautiful garden. After all these years, 53 years oh, of gardening, it's a long time. It's a long time, <laughs> but you you made an impression in the community and here on the land. So it's well, I now know what I'm doing, so I'd like to start over and yes, mess everything I know. and put I them think... in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for watching All Things Gardening live. I appreciate it. Um, this will live on the Vermont Public YouTube channel, and of course, we'd like to thank Gardener Supply too for sponsoring us uh, to do this. And um, if you have gardens that you might think would be good, uh, let us know. We We'll probably be doing more of these either this year or next.